Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us be seated as we listen to these words from Holy Scripture. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Alamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, 
both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoke and mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsively by half verse, Psalm 104. O Lord, how manifold are your works. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things, too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan. Which you have made with a sword of it. All of them look to you. And together they move into season. You give it to them, they gather it. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his hearts. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from 1 Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, And to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, the many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, 
We were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said on this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Please be seated. So do you remember way back in Epiphany when we heard John the Baptist describe his relationship with Jesus, that while John baptized with water, Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit. Well, here we are, remembering those words as we hear the baptizing of the Holy Spirit that has descended upon the disciples, giving them many gifts to do the work of carrying on Jesus' message to a world that so needs it. In John's Gospel, the Holy Spirit is talked about a lot. The Pentecost story is a little different in tone, well, actually a lot different than the story told in Acts of the Apostles, and that's okay. A news story in the New York Times is going to be different in tone than one on TikTok. And that's all right, too. But let's think a bit on what we hear from John about the Holy Spirit. Not just in this passage, but throughout this Gospel of John. The Spirit is a sign that Jesus is who he says he is. The spirit brought to believers by Jesus from Jesus' heavenly father dwells with believers forever, chapter 14. The spirit both teaches and reminds them of Jesus' teachings, also chapter 14. The spirit equips people to share those teachings, Chapter 16, the Spirit presses something like a master reset button on our understanding of sin, righteousness, and judgment, saying that these are things for God to name, not earthly humans. Chapter 16, the Spirit continues to do this work always, as the Spirit has done from the beginning of time. And for that one, we point all the way back to the second verse of the first chapter of Genesis, when the, the great wind went over the chaos at the very beginning of God's creation. This is certainly a slightly different angle of view from the Pentecost scene in our reading from Acts of the Apostles, the one that's so familiar to us. And how many churches have you been to have done something on Pentecost when you get a bunch of people who are fluent in different languages to get up and read parts of that Acts thing? It is powerful. And it is different from the way John looks at things. The Acts passage is all about the drama of the moment when the Spirit is first encountering, or when the disciples are first encountering that Spirit, with the tongues of flame on people's heads and everyone being able to understand different languages. If this were the movies, the story in Acts of the Apostles is directed by Martin Scorsese. The story in John is Ingmar Bergman. A different angle of view, but equally powerful. I focus this morning on the Johannine Gospel version because John forces us to remember the result, the long-term result of this descent of the Holy Spirit on those who believe. This is not just the shock and awe of an amazing one-time event. It is deeper than that. We are given a companion, a forever companion, who comforts, who teaches, who guides, who empowers, who energizes us to live our lives as active members of the body of Christ, not merely passive receivers of Jesus' teaching. Being a Christian 
no matter what your grammatical leanings, is an active verb. It's a joy, it's a challenge. A joy because we are given the help we need to be Christ's hands and heart in a broken world. A joy because we are guided and encouraged, we're comforted in the midst of our work. A challenge, though, because of that whole active verb thing. We must be active Christians, not just receptacles of good words. We must act because Jesus tells us to continually act, caring for those who are despised, who are hungry, who are poor, who are in prison, who are sick, who are mentally challenged, who are without shelter. And also, we are to care for those with whom we disagree. That's a radical concept in today's world, isn't it? Jesus didn't stop loving the Pharisees when they were being troublesome. He recognized that their instincts to reform people's understanding of their relationship with God, their instincts were good, but he knew that he had a better way to offer. And while he was in the midst of those Pharisees, even when they were at their most irksome, he didn't stop eating with them trying to tell them to focus on what was truly important, loving them even when he didn't really like them very much. Yeah, I suspect Jesus was not universal in liking every single person he encountered, but he sure did love them. It's important for us to remember this. The Pentecost of John's account as well as the Pentecost of the Acts of the Apostles. It's not a one-time flash, it is forever, this Holy Spirit among us. And as we enter into the active phase of seeking a permanent rector, we need to remember this Holy Spirit, so beautifully described in John's Gospel. Now I know there's a tendency when we have something going on that has such importance as our search and makes us so determined to do the right thing, to work as hard as we can to control this process, every little detail, planning it for everything that can go awry, plan A, plan B, plan C, plan Z, plan AA, plan BB, and so on. You know what I'm talking about. It's a human tendency. And the higher the stakes, the more we buy into it. And I am here today to tell you, you don't need to do this. It gets in the way. The Holy Spirit has got this. It doesn't need to be micromanaged. It doesn't need to be endlessly overanalyzed. You know that old remark about sometimes you get into the space where it's paralysis by analysis? We do not need to do that. We need to follow a process that has yielded good and holy results a thousand times or more now, and to listen, to listen, not talk, to listen for the Holy Spirit. That's how your vestry came up with the search committee praying and listening for the Holy Spirit's voice. And that group that will serve you on the search committee, they'll be commissioned next Sunday, is a wonderful group, broadly representing the parish in all of its beautiful complexity. That's how the committee will do its work, by listening for the Holy Spirit, for trusting that Jesus has breathed upon them as Jesus breathes on us all, as Jesus breathed about on the disciples in John's gospel, saying, peace be with you. 
So I ask you now to visualize the Holy Spirit on that first Pentecost day, not as a dive-bombing bird bringing flames, but as a wise and peace-filled dove descending into the souls of those who believe and whose voice will guide not only this search committee, but all of us as we proceed in this work and in all the work which God has laid out for us. What happens if we don't do that? I will tell you a little story. And I may have told it to you before, but I'll tell it to you anyway because it's an important message. There's a church I know that decided that because they were people who were used to hiring people, had their own way of approaching things. And I kept saying, listen for the Holy Spirit. If this isn't of the Spirit, don't do it. But they were really determined to do it their way, and nothing I could say could change their minds. And they're very proud that they found somebody, somebody who they thought had the gravitas and uh, the track record to serve them well. And this was a good priest, but he was not the right priest for them. And the greatest gifts he had to offer were not gifts they were willing to receive. So they called the priest. And things started going sideways very early on. And he and I chatted, and I said, so what do you think happened here? And I said, and he said, you know, from the very beginning, I had a sense that this was not necessarily the right call for me. There were a bunch of things that caused me to question it. And so how come you took the call? And he said, well, they pursued me. They decided that I was the one, and even though I kept saying no, they kept coming back and saying, you're the one that we want. And after the third or fifth or twelfth time, I decided maybe that was of the Holy Spirit, even though I was not perceiving that the Holy Spirit was saying that. And here we are today. And he left that position after only four years. And let me tell you, that was a position that was viewed as next best thing to being bishop in some places. As a matter of fact, it was better than bishop. He was being compensated a whole lot better than the bishop was being compensated and had a bunch of other perks. But it was not where God called him to be. And if the search committee had prayed and listened to the Holy Spirit rather than saying, we're going to do this the way we want to do this, it would have been a different ending. But we know that Jesus breathes on us, and Jesus has sent his Holy Spirit to guide us. If we pay attention to that, we will be able to do this thing and do it well because God is doing a new thing in this season of the life of this parish, and we are asked to participate in this new thing, but we are not in control. Ah! We're not in control. What are we going to do? We're going to remember, God is with us. God is with us. The Holy Spirit is with, with us the whisper of the God who is in control and who knows better than we do what is most needed in the months and the years to come. And so we pray. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit among us. Let us set aside our own foolish insistence that we have the power to control and trust that your desires for this parish are the better way. Help us listen for that spirit when we are anxious. Help us trust decisions made with the guidance of the spirit, even perhaps especially when 
we are surprised by them. Help us to remember that we are beloved and bring our own gifts and that every gift is welcome at your table. We humbly ask all this, gratefully knowing that your spirit is among us and within us. Amen. And now please stand in body or in spirit as we reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Standing or kneeling, let us say the prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. In our parish cycle of prayer, we remember the Short, Simpson, and Smith families. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all the work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. We remember those who desire healing in body or spirit. We especially pray for Lucas, Sydney, Texie, Nick, Sam, Nell, Tim, Helen, Bill, Nancy, Shelley, Bill, David, Tyler, Elaine, Harrison, Brett, and Jean. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Susan, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. I invite you to add your own petitions, either silently or aloud. Hear us, Lord. For us, 
We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. I invite you to add your own thanksgivings, either silently or aloud. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We remember those who have died, especially James Harris, in whose memory the altar flowers have been given by a friend. To the glory of God, let your loving kindness be upon them. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet each other with words and signs of peace. Peace be with you. Peace, choir. Peace, Tim. Please be seated for a few brief announcements. It's so much fun to look out and see so many wearing their red, in case you didn't notice. It's casual Pentecost. We are so glad you are with us today. Please do join us after the service for some goodies, coffee, or something cold to drink, and some snacks down in the parish hall. We would love to continue our conversation there. Some big cheers for those who have already donated as part of their participation in our fundraising for our windows, the restoration of the rest of our stained glass windows. We have gotten off to a very good start and we want to continue that process so that we can get all of them completed. They are so beautiful and they're also a fragile thing and they need our loving care. So please do donate, particularly in honor of those who have come before you who have shaped you in the faith. Many of these windows were dedicated originally by family members who uh, wanted to honor their forebears in that way. And you can be part of that fun too. You can be part of lifting up those who gave us a foundation in our faith and who are now at the heavenly banquet because that gift of faith is such an extraordinary one. Uh, let's see, what else is happening this week? The office is closed on Monday for Memorial Day. Please hold in your hearts our ongoing prayer for peace around the world. The original Memorial Day was a remembrance of those who had participated in the great wars and who had suffered. Let us remember them and their sacrifice and let us pray for peace, which we so need today. Any other announcements today? I keep thinking I've got another announcement to make and I can't remember what it is. The picnic. Pardon me? The picnic. the picnic, yes. Once again, all of the Episcopal churches in Petersburg are doing a picnic at Battlefield Swim Club. That is on June 10th, right? June 10th. And uh, all are invited to participate. 11th? 11th. I've lost track of the days. What else is new? And uh, it's a very modest feat, and just bring along a, a side dish or a dessert or something. St. Paul's is taking the lead in this, as they did last year. We had such a good time last year. I do hope that you will participate in this. Please let 
St. Paul's know that you're going to come so that they have enough chicken. Now comes the time. Now comes the time. As we enter into this summer season, because even though it isn't June 1 yet, in church land we are into the summer season, now comes the time when we will uh, be wondering how things will go over the summer. Church still goes on in the summertime. If you're in town, come on over. If you're not in town, watch from afar. And also, give. The bills still keep coming, even in the summertime. And I don't like to harp on this, but we need your help in that regard. We want to make sure that this place continues doing all it does, both within these walls and outside these walls. And your giving is important. Please do do that today and always. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts with thanksgiving. The offering will be given and received.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth. Uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, 
the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, for the is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Christ, the bread of heaven. 
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And now in thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, you, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now unto the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen.
And now let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.